St. Lucia, this is Open Mic, and we are back to the third segment of our program. Uh, when we left off, we were just about finalizing the synopsis of the latest police findings and the impact report. Uh, but as I've always said, time goes very quickly, and we really want to touch on the agricultural side. So really and truly, we don't want to spend a lot more time, but Cuthbert wants to just put some finishing touches on what you just said and then we move on to the agriculture. Cuthbert. Well, Michael, again, as I say, when looking at the police, and I believe within the police force we have, the police force should not be in any form be looked at in any kind of political eye because it doesn't matter who is in power, the police force is there to serve. I remember when I was doing my training in England, early in the early days, I was told that Phillips, you remember you are a police officer and the, gov the, the prime minister today can be the leader of the opposition tomorrow and the leader of the opposition tomorrow can be the prime minister and I was told that one live at 10 down in street the other live at 11 whatever the case so what they were saying as police officers you serve who the people decide that constitutionally that this is the government and you are, you are to perform your duties as you should a police officer, be it uh, opposition or be it the government. And I always remember that as far as my training is concerned. The other thing we haven't got here, and for years in the police they were saying, the gazetted officers from, co co from, commission, from cadet officer to commissioner of police, they are gazetted officers and they fall in under the Public Service Commission. So they are promoted by the Public Service Commission. They are disciplined by the Public Service Commission. And the ranks from inspector to constable falls in under the commissioner. But one of the things that has happened, the officer corps has never had an association or a grouping so that they could speak out. The only time I knew they had one, it wasn't any properly organized was when I was in the force, like we had Martin Carrasco and a group of us had decided we have to speak out for the officer rank. Because in all what that is going on with the commissioner and what is happening there, if you had a strong officer corps or an officer association or group, they could speak out. Because the non-gazetted ranks, that is from inspector to constable, they fall in and their spokesperson should be more on matters relating to welfare. So you see where it comes in. Yeah. But tell me something, Governor. Based on what you're just telling me there now, and what I'm hearing about the, gov the police should report to the governor, the Prime Minister is really the Commander-in-Chief of, of, of the country. So he is in a position to hire or fire the Governor-General if he so desires. So how does it work? Why is it the governor, it's a governor, why is the constitution that way? What, what, what is your take on Michael, that? Michael, my take on that matter uh -huh. is because if you look at some of the laws, if you look at the constitution, yes, and it's time now mm -hmm. that persons either in the attorney general's office uh -huh. come to the public and explain these things to the public okay. as to the role of the prime minister mm -hmm. versus the role of the governor general okay. and the way in the service things have to be channeled. Right? So persons, because people can speculate and say anything. You have people such like Claudius and some of these people who are on the program. And I think what you do is to explain that and get the legal people to explain it. Cut, yeah. Because sometimes you are being told, okay, uh, the Governor General might be there, but I might have to report to the Governor General through maybe my minister or through whoever it is. So we had a, somebody has to really explain that yeah. before we say that I report or only the Governor General can do this. Because thing. if you look at what's happening to Day Cuthbert. So this needs clarification. Yeah. If because look, I can't yeah. give you the answer. Yeah, but, but if you look at what's happening today, I don't see the Governor General playing any part at all. I see that the Prime Minister having direct contact with the police. Well, it's common knowledge what has been done that uh, Mr. Francois was asked to resign in the public interest. Um, certain emoluments were paid. I'm not prepared to go into that. It's not my but business at this point. But the whole thing is that the buck stopped with the Prime Minister because he made the decision. I don't hear the Governor General's name being used at all. Well, Michael, let yeah. me just make it clear. Sure. 
I have a copy of what we call the Pensions Act. Okay. I keep telling persons that they don't do their research and they don't read. Yeah. That is, let me see what it says there, Pension Act Chapter 15.26. It says compulsory retirement. Eh? Yes. The Governor General mm -hmm. may require an officer to retire from the public service under the government of St. Lucia at, a, at any time after he or she attains Can the I age stop of you 55. For a minute? You said the Governor General. That, right? Wait, but you must always wait for the end. Okay. <laughs> right? In special cases, with the approval of the appropriate service commission at any time after he or she has attained the age of 50 years. Now, what are the things that's happening? That's why I tell you these things would need explanation because as it says the Governor General, but then it tells you after it has been t told so by the S Service Commission. Now, everybody tell me about retirement, retirement. Here this one. Circumstances, well, persons can be retired. Eh? Mm -hmm. They can abolish the post. Okay. But you cannot abolish the post of the Commissioner of Police. It's a constitutional post. Right. But even if you don't abolish it, you can say on compulsory retirement for the purpose of facilitating improvement in the organization of the department to which he or she belongs, head at one, by which, by which greater efficiency or economy may be, may be effected or economy could be affected. So, Michael is there. The guys can come in and say, I'm reorganizing the force. And I can tell you, that was under the, the uh, it was under this, they retired me. Can I say something to you as a layman? <laughs> but again, you, you talk I of say economy. It. You talk of economy. The man is 52 years of age. He still has another. So you're paying him his full salary until he reaches 55, and you have to bring in her. So there's no economy there. Michael, I'll tell you, you're speaking of it. I go back to my case. Mm. I was 45 years of age mm -hmm. when I was retired under that same act, mm. and they had to pay me a pension as well as almost age 55. But that's fine. But I'm not saying, I'm, because <laughs> I'm, I'm not in the police yeah. force, but when, but these, but but what yeah, yeah, the yeah, but when these things are done, two wrongs don't make a right, even if they did it for you and they did it for Mr. Francois, and they continue to do it. Shouldn't they find some way, because let us face it, there are no secrets in St. Lucia. We are fully aware of the fact that what is it that stemmed that retirement? Some sort of concern over the impact, whatever the case may be. And now, I'm not saying the Prime Minister is not justified or the Governor General, whoever may be, but what I'm trying to say, every time it's done, like in your case, you're still a young man, so we're paying two people pension, and don't forget Mr. Regis too. That's so right. There you so have three people. So look at what it's costing the state. I, if it's me, if I was running a business, okay, and I have a CEO, okay, and um, I have to pay him under those conditions. I'm not saying that I wouldn't get rid of him, but there are ways you have to find out to, to try to work things out because there is a cost to the state, and we already have serious problems with our economy. And you know, everybody can look at it. But when you look at a man like you, a young man like you, and a man like Mr. Regis, and a man like Francois, you're talking of millions of dollars at the end of the day. Well, I'll tell you another thing too, you see. Here it is, when you have reports, that's why sometimes we do not see reports. Because in the report, I always ask the question, did the Carl Hudson Phillips say to retire Phillips at age 45? Yeah. I, I don't know what's in the report. It has been said or it's been alleged. I have asked certain persons in, in this country Up a to copy now. of the report, you no. know. And can you imagine, I as a f commissioner, and that whole report had to do with me, I never saw it, but past commissioners had seen part and parcel of this no, report. No, that's what I'm trying to say. Do, as a taxpayer, <laughs> I pay millions of, I have paid millions of dollars of taxes in my lifetime. Yes. And that's my money that's being spent. We should know, the Chamber of Commerce, somebody should know, because how can you let Prime Ministers come on who have not paid that amount of taxes make these kind of decisions over and over at a cost to the, to, to the taxpayer. That cannot be right. That's why I tell you it has nothing to do with politics, you yeah. know, Michael. It's just that you have to well, ask the know, powers I that mean, be. That's why the I say we, we be have be to start putting case. our foot down as to these things because that's right. such things cannot happen. St. Lucia, you know, it is so. Uh, it's, uh, it's, I know what we've been discussing now is very informative. Uh, we have spent three of our sections already okay. on the police when we really wanted to touch on our agriculture. Right. So 
it strikes me that if we have to continue, I have to prop yeah. a whole new show for that. But we have now come to the end of the third segment of our program. We'll be right back. <laughs>